Alright, so my second video is going to be on linear transformation. This is a chapter that we kind of skipped over early on in the year when we were doing regular regressions, but it's actually just kind of like an extension of it, and it's actually very, very simple once you get actually into it. Basically, if you have a set of points and you plot it and it doesn't really look linear, and if you do your like regression analysis and you get an R squared that's like whatever, 0.4, and it's kind of like it doesn't look too, it doesn't look too great, you can actually transform the data to make it actually look linear to determine whether or not it's an ex exponential or regression model. Two of the most common transformations that we see are natural log with the number e, or just a regular log with the number 10. Uh, uh, more often than not, the exam will not ask us to define, to actually transform the data, but rather to look at a multiple choice question and then to explain, okay, if we transform the data and the li resulting line is linear, what does that mean? Basically, if we transform the data and we determine that it's more linear, so let's say you take the ln of all the numbers in the y-axis, and if the r-squared value is a lot higher, we can determine that actually the true regression is exponential rather than linear. And of course, you can, I mean, aside from e and 10, you can have like x to the negative first, x to the negative one-half, x squared, and so on. Um, again, one of the nice ways to test whether or not this line works is your residual plot, which we've been over a couple times. Uh, this is just kind of like a standard three different uh, log properties that we've been doing for the past couple of years. Log of b, m times n, is basically the sum of the individual parts. Uh, m divided by m is basically the difference of the two. And if you have x to some power, the power actually just gets multiplied times the log of that certain number. This is another thing that I don't think we ever went over in class, but this is something that I realize is kind of important. Uh, if you only transform a single axis, your resulting transformation will be exponential, but if you actually transform both of the axes, you'll get a power regression. Uh, that's essentially kind of like a, ni a nice thing to know, so if you do ln of the y and the x, you'll get a power, ln of only the y gives you an exponential power. Uh, when you're also writing this stuff down, let's say for a given exponential one, you do, for exponential one, you do ln of y hat equals ax plus a x was B. You always have to remember to have the hat there because they're really, really strict about that rule for some very, very odd reason. And you need to make sure that when you're, if it says, we, I think we did an example a couple weeks ago with uh, the size of a mammal and the weight of a mammal and the size of its brain. And so we were, I think we were trying to find out like whether or not like it was like what was the size of uh, Sasquatch's brain. You have to remember that when you determine like for a given like A X plus B, once you determine that number, it's actually the ln of Y equals that number. So you have to remember to convert back to y, so you do e to that power, gives you ln. And that's pretty much all you have to know, and that's about it.